A little over a month ago, I decided to join Ira in his challenge to read nothing but new authors in the month of November. I am so glad that I took him up on this initiative because it's been a great reading month for me. I read seven books by seven new authors and each one was really good, at least good. Some were excellent. I liked some more than others. And in this video, I want to rank them from my least favorite to the best. The caveat being there isn't really a bad book on this list. They're all good. So at number so, seven, last on the list, we have Philip Jose Farmer with To Your Scattered Bodies Go. The reason it's last is not because I didn't like it at all. I liked some aspects of it a lot, but some others I hate it. Just hate it. So let's get into it very quickly. First of all, the stuff I loved about it is the premise, the idea, the novel here. Amazing. Sir Richard Francis Burton wakes up after dying at, I think, age 69. He wakes up in a new body. He's 25 years old, naked, hairless, floating on a river. With him in this world, every single human who's lived prior to him, going back to cave men, and every human who's lived after him. So humans from 20th century, uh, Sir Richard Francis Burton dies, I think, at the end of 19th century. So humans that we know, uh, and this was fun to read, humans that we know and mostly hate from 20th century. Humans from 21st century imagined humans also make appearance, perhaps not just humans. So the premise is ripe for incredible uh, discoveries. It's really great. I don't think, I don't think Philip Jose Farmer did enough with this book. His writing is okay, just so-so, not great. His character development is okay, not great. And in fact, I hated the protagonist. He was a womanizer, he was a jerk. I know that's how the real Richard uh, Burton was, but still the choice could have been made to go with somebody else. This book just doesn't age very well. Uh, there's racism, I mean, it's, it's kind of bad. To give you an idea, there's one Jewish character in this book, and this is the narrator. So this, is, this isn't anyone in the book who happens to be a Nazi, for example, saying this. This is the voice of the narrator saying, Lev, the Jew, stuck his big-nosed face through the grass and said, may I join you? This is cringy, to say the least. Uh, and the stuff about women, there was no use beating around the bush with a factory girl. Not that she had any, wink, wink. Again, cringe is the only word to use. I'm only a woman, she said. What do I have to offer? All a woman has to offer, Burton said, grinning. These types of things throughout the book were kind of disgusting. So I didn't like that. It really kind of was ruining the story for me. Uh, but still, in the end, I do have to say, it's a good story. There are other books in this series. I don't know how soon I'm gonna get to them. I have The Riverboat, I think is the title of the next one. The Great River Boat, I forget. I may want to read it, but I'm going to take a break from this book uh, before I pick up uh, the second one. At number six is Nandi Okorafor with Binti. The reason why this one is so low on the list is because the book is so short. It's basically a short story. It's the first one in a series. I think there are three books. It's a trilogy, but that should have been just one book. There's no reason for this to be a standalone. Uh, I don't understand that. Now, the story is interesting. We have a protagonist that, uh, that you can definitely root for, and I did. Um, the resolution to the story uh, at the ending of this one was, to me, naive. I didn't love it, but I'm definitely curious to read the other two books, and I will at some point. I think Nandi Okorafor can definitely write. She has good imagination. There is a world here that I think is very interestingly drawn. So I'm definitely curious to read more of Nandi Okorafor. Let me know if you've read the other ones. Let me know if I should continue. Okay, at number five, we have Starter Villain by John Scalzi. A fun read. <laughs> At number five, we have John Scalzi with Starter Villain. Now this is just a fun read. If you're looking for something, a little bit of an escape, if you're looking for something that you're gonna read, have a lot of fun with, but then probably forget it as soon as you put it down. This is your book. It's funny, at times you will laugh, which is great, pure entertainment, but it's silly also, convenient plot at times. 
So I didn't love it, but I liked it. I, read, I had a lot of fun reading it. Shot a video, a few videos back, talking about this book, how it kind of made me uh, feel uh, kind of bad after putting it down. And I was wondering why do I have this feeling even though I enjoyed this book? Uh, why does it feel as if I've just kind of had a nice good time, but uh, it's like scrolling on uh, Instagram for, uh, for a couple of hours? Anyway, I'm being a little bit too hard on this book. It is good. It is fun if you're looking for something just to kind of escape a palate cleanser from some hard sci-fi. Go to John Scalzi's uh, Starter Villain. You will have a good time. Number five on my list. If I wanted to put a dividing line between the seven books, it would be right here. We'd have the previous three books on one side and the next four as clear-cut favorites. Any of the four books here could arguably be number one, but at number four, we have John Wyndham's Day of the Triffids. This is an excellent book. This is an important science fiction book. Written in 1951, it was groundbreaking. Dystopian classic. I don't think enough people are reading this book, although I think it's having a moment because I'm hearing about it a lot on booktube. So this is a great book. Like I said, a dystopian future. Uh, or from our perspective, past, of course. Uh, what happens is most of the humanity goes blind. And at the same time, we are inflicted with the horrors of aggressive plants that can move, can pick up their roots and walk. Perhaps they're intelligent. The writing in this book is really good. The story is excellent. Dark at times, thought-provoking. What does it mean? for humanity to survive, what corners need to be cut, what has to happen. The one thing I didn't love about this book, I suppose, is I didn't really connect with any of the characters very strongly. The romance that in this book is not great. It's a scientist writing a romance. That's how it feels like to me. Uh, but overall, a fabulous read. I'm glad that I read Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham, and I'm definitely going to read more of his works in the future. Let me know what you thought of this book and what else I should read of his. Now at number three, we have Paul Anderson with Tau Zero. Now this was the type of science fiction that I really enjoy. Thought-provoking, again, big in its scope, fabulous work. This isn't the type of book that you want to read if you're new to science fiction because it can be a little bit dense at times, but it was amazing. To me, the story is fantastic. We are on a ship. Lenora Christine, I think, is the name of a ship. This ship is speeding through the galaxy. And at some point, the crew members realize that it's speeding out of control. They've lost the ability to slow the ship down, to stop the ship. What does this mean for the crew members? What's gonna happen as they are approaching light speed? What is happening to the world the universe around them, as every minute that passes on the ship is thousands of years, millennia, all around them. Fabulous, thought-provoking book, uh, really interesting, scientifically correct, probably up to a point. The very ending may be just a little bit wild, but what a ride, what a ride. I really enjoyed it. Again, characters not great, although probably better actually than Day of the Trivets, and maybe that's why this is number three. Uh, and not number four. I really enjoyed this book more than I expected from what I've read online and from what, what other people had said. This was uh, fabulous. Kind of the ultimate hard science fiction book for sure. Good one. Read it. If you did, let me know. If you don't agree, of course, with these choices, please definitely leave a comment below if you have a different take on some of these books. I'd love to hear your thoughts. The top two books are a true toss-up. I'm gonna stick to my guns and leave as number one, the one I enjoyed the most, but at number two is the one that is probably, objectively, the best of the seven books, More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon. Not much I can say about this book, except the writing, the prose, is at times sublime, interesting, cutting, tough, rough, weird, the characters, the story, everything works beautifully between the writing, the prose, and the action, the transformations, the weirdness, like I said. This is a book, this is a science fiction book that is unique. This one is one of the books 
that I think every science fiction reader should read. Uh, and I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that this uh, new reader, November, was the time that I picked up more than human. This is more than just a science fiction book. It's something that I will think about in the future. But at number one, we have Daniel Krauss with Whalefall. The reason why is I just enjoyed the read so much. This was a really strong book, a really fun read. Also, the fact that I could connect so well with the main protagonist meant that much more, I think, to me. Uh, some of his resentment towards his dad perhaps resonated a bit with me as well. But mostly, he's a scuba diver in a situation that is impossible. He is swallowed by a sperm whale. I was a scuba diver for a long time. I really enjoyed the sport of scuba diving. And this was like going back into the ocean again. It was fabulous. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. It was well written. I loved the ending. There were some things about this book that, um, that I didn't enjoy. It's not gonna be my all time favorite, but it was a fun, interesting, thought provoking, at times difficult, um, read and uh, and a book that really surprised me. So number one on the list is Daniel Krauss with Whalefall. I'm gonna stand by that choice in the end, even though this is barely science fiction. Uh, qu questionable really uh, choice for number one SF read, but hey, it's my list. I read the book and I enjoyed it, so we'll stay with it. And just a quick update. This is what I'm starting, Empire of Silence. Let me know if you're reading, if you've read the Sun Eater series uh, up to where we are right now, I think book four, book five, I don't even know. But I've heard so much about these books, I've been trying to avoid spoilers. It's time to crack it open. I'm gonna start this book today. Uh, let me know about this one or any other books that are on my list of the top seven uh, new author science fiction books that I read. Let me know your thoughts and thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time.